Good afternoon. Actually, now it's good evening, I guess, because it's getting darker earlier. <laughs> Welcome to episode number 901. Yes, I broke the 900 barrier achievement level yesterday. The topic today is about compromise and how compromise is a losing proposition in a relationship. And then it didn't quite title it that way, but it's what I mean, and I'll explain why and what you might want to do differently. And this is going to apply to particularly romantic relationships, but it applies to other ones too. Also will apply if you're single about what you're planning ahead for. So before I get into all of that explanation and talk about it, let me start off by saying, um, oh, introducing myself. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Nice to see you. Um, my name is Barry Selby, and I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and coupled men, singles and couples, men and women. I'm very, fam very um, adamant about my book being a good book because I wrote it. Um, and I am also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's what infuels my work with women and also what inspires these talks starting almost three years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today, we're at episode number 901. So there's a bunch of these out there and I'll tell you at the end we can watch the replays. This is a Facebook Live first, which is why if I comment on people, if I respond to people on the broadcast and you can't see them, it's because you're watching it somewhere else and I'll tell you where else you can find it at the end of the broadcast. And I'm also gonna drop some links at the back end, I got a feeling, because this talk's gonna lead to something, I'm sure. So I'll let you know ahead of time, stay tuned for that. So, um, I was thinking about the word compromise today. I was actually watching, reading a post about compromising something. I can't remember what it was exactly, because that wasn't the relevance. It was actually this point that's coming up that I want to talk about. Um, compromise has been banded around a lot of times about how in relationships is important to compromise, to have give and take, and to um, and really come to a place of settlements you work things together and that's the word that bugs me right away settlement um in fact i think in the dictionary that the word compromise translates to settlement of differences or to bring to come to a common understanding that is kind of the lesser of the greater good the way i vision it and i may be wrong on this so just be bear in mind this is my perspective so if you have a different perspective it may not be the same one is a compromise means bringing down to a low level not raising to a higher level and that's where the problem is right there lowering versus raising in relationship is one of my pet peeves. My feeling about relationships, as you may have watched any of my broadcasts, is always about raising the bar, lifting things up, being your greatest good, having a win-win situation. And that's another reason why I think sometimes compromising is a lose-lose, not a win-win. The problem with that perspective is it goes against the grain because most people, especially in therapy, you have to find that common ground where you can compromise and settle on something that works for the other person. And sometimes you've got to give something to get something back. The thing about that is, it puts you in a place where you feel less than, where you feel deprived, where you feel limited because of something you had to give up because you didn't want to lose, you didn't want to lose your, well, no, hang on, where am I going to go with that? Hang on a second, I just saw a part that was like, that's going off track, let me come back on track. So, in, the therapy well let me let me let me go to the extreme case the divorce court <laughs> now if you haven't seen the, there's a video on um yeah there's a video on youtube i recommend you look for i don't know if it's still out there but i watched it a few years ago which is called divorce core excuse me divorce, divorce corp which is c-o-r-p not divorce court divorce corp c-o-r-p watch that video it's extremely enlightening about the whole hi donna nice to see you thanks for being here it's a whole discussion about how divorce works. The thing about divorce is it's set up to be a money maker for everybody except the couple in divorce. That's unfortunately the truth. So again, find the video. If I, if I can find it, I'll put the link below, but I, I know it's out there under YouTube, which is Divorce Corp, C-O-R-P, period. Because it's basically a corporation, it's a business. So the thing about divorce in this context of compromise is that it's usually about taking from the other person so you can feel better about yourself. And the problem with divorce is never a win-win. It's always either a lose-lose or a win-lose or a lose-win. It's never a win-win. And if you understand the framework, what I mean is, is mean that both people get knocked down <clears throat> or one person wins at the price of the other person. It's never both people winning. And that's the reason why I think relationships have a challenge too because divorce is kind of in the influence about mine and yours and separation. Now, I'm worried as I'm stepping into territory I don't have any planning for. So just bear with me as I reach into this conversation. But my thing about compromise is it really is about settling. Again, the dictionary says it that way. And so my idea about in your relationship, and I guess what I think what I think is a more powerful alternative, is in a moment, 
<laughs> so the other divorce, let's finish that thought, that thread off. Divorce is something where people are usually trying to get the best out of situations at the price of something else. Now, in some cases, and some of my clients have gone through this, divorce is absolutely the required step to free yourself from a trapped relationship that doesn't work, period, because there are plenty of people. Hey, Phoenix, congratulations, I saw the picture, wonderful. Um, <laughs> those side look conversations. Um, and when you come to LA, we've got to talk, by the way, because I saw what you did with, uh, um, with Katie, so that was cool. Anyway, sidebar, back on track. So, divorce. For most people, may not be aware of it. Maybe it's an LA, I don't think, don't think it's an LA thing, but certainly it's more West Coast, I think, than anywhere else. Is there's another thing available when you're separating a relationship called mediation. And mediation is not promoted very well because there's a lot, not a lot of money in it. It's a fairly low investment for both partners, but you get to mediate the best way out of a relationship so you can leave in a clean way. Divorce is uh, someone's gonna have to give up something and compromise. So for me, there's such a powerful, potent split, put space for, awesome Phoenix, um, but space for changing how we do things. Now let's back up into a relationship because divorce is a lot further down the road for the most people look. Because that's the other problem, by the way. Divorce is not usually planned ahead. No, I'm not gonna go there. So, <laughs> so in relationship, the temptation, well, I wanna say the temptation because it's like everyone's relationship is different. So let me speak more of a global explanation for this. In relationship, for many, many people, they're usually in it on one of two ways, what they can give or what they can take. It's really about how they can grow themselves. In fact, most people in a relationship are not usually looking to the relationship they're in as a place where they're gonna thrive and grow themselves. It's usually about what you can do for the other person or we can take from the other person. And that, un that inequality, that compromise, that settling as I called it, is where people lose that relationship. As I said at the beginning, for me, relationship is about how great you, how much you can expand and grow to be better than you've ever been before. And having everybody, excuse me, both people, everybody, it's two people in a relationship in my conversations, having both people benefit from being in the relationship without taking from each other, where both people grow and thrive and express and become more of themselves, and the relationship thrives because of that, is the way I've talked about it before, is that relationship is like a gestalt. And Gestalt, the definition from Fritz Perls, is it's the, is the sum is, yeah, yeah, exactly, two people. Hey, Phoenix, I've got friends in LA who are polyamorous, so that's how, that's how we'll have the conversation. Not my preference, that's what they do. So, <laughs> so the Gestalt from Fritz Perls is basically where, where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And for me, in my languaging, in my coaching, in my work with my clients, and what I recommend for everybody in a relationship, is that a relationship, yes, well, yeah, you, you're exploring that now, I know. <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, so the idea in relationship is the relationship grows and thrives because of the participation of both people. So if you're in a relationship that is growing and thriving and becoming greater and greater and greater because the two of you are contributing to yourselves and each other, there's no room for compromise. Because compromise is a lessening, as I said. It's like stepping down, not stepping up. And my, my, my invitation, my encouragement, my... Um, message <laughs> is about becoming more and more who you can be. Relationships have lots of purposes in lots of ways. I've talked about this many times over my 900 broadcasts. And one of those is they get to show you who you really are. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly, Phoenix. If you're in a polyamorous relationship, yes, that would be a bit nuts. It's tough enough to make one woman happy, let alone multiple women. That's very true. Men are actually easy to please, to be honest. Anyway, that's another, again, I'm, these are 17 other topics I'm not talking about in this one. <laughs> I'll show you when you watch my replays elsewhere so you watch those later on. So, <laughs> attempting to tie this back in a knot. I love the interruptions. Thank you, Phoenix. I love that. Keep me on my toes. So, compromise for me is a limited way of being in a relationship. Now, many people live that way. Um, oh, that was the piece I was talking about. Come back to me. There are many forms of relationship. One part of relationship for many people which you don't realize is, is the place where you're going to see yourself in the mirror. And I don't mean in a pleasant way. In a relationship, what happens is if you really are committed to the relationship, the intimacy and the vulnerability that can happen between two people means that all of your crap shows up. If you're not willing to deal with it, you're going to start dumping it on the other person, which isn't real and isn't right, but you'll do it anyway because you're not willing to take ownership for your own stuff. That's the challenge of being in a relationship that's not designed to work. Or just, excuse me, that's not true. That's the challenge of being in a relationship where you're not willing to do the work. That's more accurate. And... I've had a whole thing about soulmates I've about many times before where I believe soulmates are that. They're not like when you meet a soulmate, everything's light, everything's light, light fairy dust and all blessings. Soulmates is where you get to do the real work. 
So I may have a less um, romantic position on soulmates than other people have. Anyway, back to compromise, attempting to put this together. So as I said, I looked up the dictionary, compromise means settling. And I'm very clear that in relationship, you don't settle. You can, but I'm not saying you should. What I'm recommending highly is that when looking for a relationship, if you're single or in one, is how can you grow? How can you be better? How can you have a relationship that adds to your life and adds to your partnership as well? If you focus that lens, your lens that way, you focus on where you want to go versus thinking you're going to go in and compromise, give up certain things, you're not doing it right. Now, here's the thing. If you, you, you will have to give up certain things to be in a relationship, like being, um, like being single, you may have certain habits, <laughs> certain foibles, certain ways of being that may not work in a relationship. That's not compromising. That's giving up stuff that doesn't work. That's different. Which is say letting go of things that don't work. I know I've got habits myself, just to be transparent, that I know certain things I've, been, I've, I've done in my life or not doing in my life will change when I'm in a relationship, just to be transparent. So just to be clear. Um, and I've put that out. Blunt. I've, I've, I've been uh, transparent on my broadcast before about that. So to bottom line this, yes, growing and, growing and not settling. There you go. Yes, Phoenix. I know you, I just, I know you saw what you meant, even though you switched the, switched the wording before. So yes, growing and not settling. So here's my bottom line, if I can get there. Being in a relationship is a wonderful adventure and a powerful choice. My work a lot of times with my clients is helping them really get clear about what didn't work in the past so they don't do that again. So what I'm saying is what's possible is great when you have a really clear vision of what you want and a really clear willingness to say no to what doesn't work. I was actually a friend of mine, sorry, I was watching a friend of mine's post today about this. She was talking about, um, about how doing the work is important. A friend of mine, she's in Texas, she's really cool, she's a matchmaker. Different arena, but interesting overlap. But she said something which really triggered me. And I said, the thing about it is, is that really we are so convenienced with smartphones and dating apps where we can swipe right to meet somebody. A lot of times people aren't willing to do the work. They just go, well, they didn't work, I'll go to the next one. This one didn't work, I'll go to the next one. They just keep swiping away their past relationships and swiping right on the next one. If you follow my work and if you want to work with me, if you want to work with me, I'm recommending this highly, you understand clearly that what I'm going to help you do is stop swiping and start choosing. And what I mean literally is, instead of bypassing your ability to process and go through the deep work to get to where you want to go, you're not, sorry, rather you're going to do that rather than just swiping to avoid it. And I, maybe it's just LA. I mean, LA is a strange place and people are very lazy. I'll be careful. Generally speaking, what I've observed, let me really be clear. I've seen people in LA be rather lazy about their dating choices. They don't go and do the work. They don't go Yes, exactly. Dating apps are the best thing for lazy people who want a digital partner and put in zero effort. And then they wonder about ghosting. In fact, there was somebody else who was talking about a friend of mine earlier today as well. There's so many topics today. Is that ghosting is a blessing. Ghosting is something people, in case you don't know the term, is when somebody basically disappears on you and you start feeling, what happened? What went wrong? What everything else? If they ghosted you, that's basically telegraphing their behavior to you in a way that you can go, you know what? I don't have to do anything. I can walk away. So... There's lots of things in this whole modern dating thing with the languaging and the terms and dating apps that have blessings and curses tied to both. So if you haven't challenged you navigate, navigating all of that stuff, reach out to me, I can help you with it, definitely. Um, but what I'm gonna say is a, a back to the point I was attempting to make, <laughs> loving this, is, is that we have the opportunity in our relationships, specifically our primary romantic relationships, to go deeper in our growth higher in a possibility and more open in our love than we've ever done before. If you want to choose that, first of all, make sure you choose yourself first. Again, as I talked about before with compromising, it's a win-lose or a lose-lose. I'm talking about win-win, both partners win. And if you're winning both sides, then you are winning as well. And that means you're loving yourself, supporting yourself, and really being a better person than you could have possibly been before when you're in that relationship. It's like your partner's calling you forward. And when you call each other forward, there's a great sense of openness to what's possible. So this is way above the idea of compromising. Now, yes, as I said, you've got to give up certain things to be in a relationship. You may have habits and, and other things. <laughs> You're just sitting on tangents tonight. I know you are, but that's okay. Phoenix, I love you. I appreciate you. And, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm really happy for you. And this is keeping me on my toes. So thank you for the nudge. <laughs> so my, my, my bottom line I'm attempting to get to here is relationship can be amazing. It's exploration and an amazing place to play. And you've got to be willing to do the work first. First of all, 
when you're single is the best time to start doing the work. There are things that are gonna happen in relationship that may not show up when you're single because it takes that person to be that close to you to push those buttons that wake up certain parts of you. You know what I mean? So the less buttons you have available because you've healed them, the better. So when you're single is the best time to resolve those past relationship buttons that keep getting pushed whenever time you're in relationships, the next time you're in one, they're not there anymore. Because the other part of that is when you do that, you'll meet somebody who doesn't actually have the same level of buttons to push either. Again, you raise your standards, you'll attract partners that raise standards too. It's kind of a wonderful mirror effect, but when you change who you are, who you become next to is even more aligned, which is what's so powerful. So I'm gonna throw some links in the comments because I did mention at the beginning, I'll put some links in there for you. If I can find that video of a divorce court, by the way, I will put it in there because it's a potent um, expose about how the divorce, divorce court system works. And again, if you want to look for it on YouTube, it is Divorce Corp, C-O-R-P, recommended viewing. It's disturbing in a sense, but also kind of like, oh my God, that's how it works. Good looking to watch. So links I put in the comments. I mentioned, um, first of all, about loving yourself because I do promote that a lot. And in fact, I'm on a summit tomorrow. And the link's on my page, by the way. I'm on a summit. There's a summit been airing all week. It started actually last week, but I'm on, I'm on the interview tomorrow. So I recommend you sign up for it. It's um, the Self Love Symposium. The link's on my page. It's a, it's a turquoise blue box with a picture of me and then um, um, a name just went out of my head, it'll come back to me. The person who's interviewing me. I'll come, I'll, I'll put it, anyway, the link's in the comments. So check that out. Um, so self-love is my guide to recommend, is my recommendation. I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love guided meditation. I'll put a link in there for you to reach out for a conversation because I did mention if you want to reach out for support and you want to do the work and you want to work with me, there's a link to find that out. Um, thank you, thank you, Phoenix. This is the, just so you know, um, because you haven't known me that long, um, I've been on at least 50 summits over the last six year, five years. It's been at least 10 to 12 a year. So this is actually a quiet year for me. I'm only on three this year. <laughs> so thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks for the love. Yeah, next step is live events. That's where my next step's gonna be. Um, anyway, finishing off the links. <laughs> nice one, Phoenix. So the links, again, self-love, um, a link to talk to me. I'll put a link in the, in the comments for my thriving through the holidays because right now, this time of year, by the way, in case you hadn't figured this out, if you're in a relationship or you're single, this is the most challenging time for people um, to go home for Thanksgiving, to go and see family. If you've, by the way, if you start doing the personal growth work, you start on the new trainings, this can be even harder because you're going back to family who haven't changed. So my, my um, invit invitation, thriving through the holidays, is my two month journey starts this Friday, runs through the holidays to give you a support system and a crucible to heal those things along the way and also to know you've got a resource to go to whenever things start stressing you out because this is the stressful time of year for many people and my goal is to help you relieve the stress. So that'll be in the comments too. So those three links will be in the comments. Anything else? Um, that'll do for now. So if there's any questions about this topic, please put them below. Again, I appreciate the help, Phoenix, and keep me on track and off track, so much love for that. Uh, if you want some guidance or support, reach out to me over social media or you can like, click one of the links in my comments I'll put in below. Don't compromise. Settling is not required. Stepping up, I love you too. Settling is stepping up to what you really want. And I highly recommend you do that. Oh, <laughs> replays. This is my daily Facebook Live. In case you haven't seen this before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can follow, you can like my page and watch them there. Although you, Facebook is not as good as YouTube at keeping my videos handy, so I'm gonna tell you the best place to find my videos in replay form is on YouTube. Now on YouTube, you won't see the comments that I can responding to here. So if I respond to people, you might be going, who's he talking to? Don't worry about that, just watch the content. Um, on YouTube, you go to my channel, which is Barry Selby. In fact, it's youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. I do have my own name there now. And there's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. Please subscribe, by the way, to my channel. I like, I'd like to get a few more than I've got now. There's only a couple of hundred. Um, but you can watch them all there and on that page on the messages of the masculine there are all of them listed from newest to oldest you can scan through search through look for keywords find the one you want get the help you need my mission in these talks is to inspire to awaken and to encourage sometimes to challenge and if you want more help and you feel like that's the way you want to work reach out to me again you can have what you want in a relationship please don't settle don't compromise hold out for what you really deserve what you really want you can have it and with that i thank you for watching I appreciate you being with me, and as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.